In the mid-21st century, the United States finds itself embroiled in the Second Civil War. Texas and California have seceded, forming the Western Force Militia, while Florida has established its own alliance. The country's authoritarian three-term president delivers a speech celebrating a significant victory over the Western forces when loyalist states. Meanwhile, photojournalist Lee Smith watches the address from her hotel room in New York City, witnessing a bombing unfold downtown. The next day, Lee joins her colleague Joel to cover a protest. Amidst the chaos, a younger journalist, Jesse Cullen, is struck in the face. Lee tends to Jesse, giving her a fluorescent vest. Suddenly, they notice a woman carrying an American flag rushing into the crowd. Lee quickly pulls Jesse to cover as the woman suicide bombs the crowd. Once the chaos subsides, Lee and Jesse document the aftermath with their cameras. Later, Lee and Joel meet their mentor Sammy at a hotel party for journalists. They plan a dangerous journey through the nation's war zones to Washington, D.C. for an interview with the president, who views the press as enemies. Despite his age and morbid obesity, Sammy insists on accompanying them to the front lines in Charlottesville, Virginia. Jesse overhears their plan and, idolizing Lee, expresses her desire to capture images of the war as it unfolds. The group prepares to depart the following day, with Jesse joining them. Lee and Joel discreetly discuss their concerns about having both Jesse and Sammy with them, but Joel reassures her that they will manage. After driving for a while, they stop for fuel, which they can only obtain using Canadian currency. One of the gunmen takes Jesse aside and Lee follows. The gunman shows them two looters hanged by their wrists after being tortured and offers them the choice to command their execution. Instead, Lee asks the gunman to pose for a photo with the men before he kills them off-screen. As they resume their journey, Jesse laments not getting a single photo. The group stops at an abandoned mall for Jesse to photograph a downed helicopter. She apologizes to Lee for feeling like a burden, but Lee is indifferent. That night, they watch gunfire illuminate the sky from a distance. Continuing on, the four navigate through a sniper zone, risking their lives while trying to capture the perfect shots. They witness several men being shot in front of them and then follow allied militia gunmen to the building where they eliminate the sniper and capture the rest of his men. The four then arrive at a refugee camp. In the middle of relaxing and feeding themselves, Lee and Jesse continue to bond while Jesse develops photos that she took during the sniper hunt. Jesse brings up the start of Lee's career where she got the perfect shot of an Antifa massacre event. Lee tells Jesse that she took great photos. The group then spends the night in good company. Continuing their journey, the four stop in a town that appears unaffected by the ongoing war. As people are seen living peacefully, the group stops to change clothes and Joel asks the shop owner if they are aware that there is a civil war going on across the country. But the woman tells Joel that the town is choosing to ignore it. Later on, the group sees that a car is speeding to catch up to them. Fearing the worst, they are surprised that it's Joel's reporter friends from Hong Kong, Tony and Bohai. Tony climbs in through the window of the group's van for fun, and Jesse does the same thing going into Tony's car with Bohai. They drive further up until the other journalists see that the other car has stopped with both doors open. They find themselves confronted by loyalist gunmen who have been murdering people passing by and dumping them into shallow graves. The head gunman shoots Bohai and leaves the others quietly panicking. Joel tries to talk him down by saying they are Americans. When the gunman learns Tony is from Hong Kong, he shoots him too. Sammy then drives the van and kills the gunman and one of his guys before getting Lee, Joel, and Jesse back inside. One remaining gunman fires at them as they drive away. Escaping the gunman, Jesse vomits in the back while Sammy tells Lee and Joel he can no longer drive because he's been shot. Joel takes over the car and drives until they make their way to a Western Forces military base in Charlottesville, driving through a burning forest. By the time they arrive at the camp, Sammy has already died from his wounds. The group meets with a British reporter named Anya. It is said that some loyalist generals have already surrendered, which makes all the trouble they went through, including losing Sammy, incredibly pointless. Lee, Joel, and Jesse join the WF as they make their way into Washington with the intent to storm the White House and get their hands on the president. Once they enter the war zone, Jesse becomes as ready as ever to get her pictures, while Lee remains in shock numbness to what's going on. The journalists take over as the WF tanks move through the remaining loyalist forces before they make their way to the heavily guarded White House. The Secret Service appears to be taking the president with them, but the soldiers know it's a decoy. The group makes their way into the White House, where they are met by more armed Secret Service agents. Jesse nearly gets in the way, but Lee pushes her out and takes a bullet for her. Jesse ends up taking multiple pictures of Lee's final moments before she and Joel get into the Oval Office, where the WF soldiers hold the president down. Joel, filled with anger over losing his friends, then kneels to ask the president for a single quote. He begs Joel not to let the soldiers kill him, to which Joel responds with, that'll do. The president is executed, and Jesse gets a great shot of it. Civil War primarily functions as a thought experiment on journalistic ethics, set in a future United States that evokes classic films about Western journalists documenting the downfall of foreign nations. At first glance, this premise might seem bizarre. In theory, it is an unusual concept. 
However, when watching the film, Civil War becomes a gripping and unsettling experience, possessing a unique vitality. It stands out from anything Garland has previously created or anything else in cinema. Despite containing nods to numerous other films and novels, that seemed to have influenced the director's vision. Most notably, Civil War offers a striking portrayal of the mindset of pure reporters, those who prioritize getting the scoop over analyzing or explaining events. Unlike editorial writers or pundits, these journalists are driven by the desire to beat the competition, whether through a written story, a TV news segment, or a Pulitzer-winning photograph. The pursuit of the scoop is an end in itself, often tied to the intense thrill of risking personal safety. This film delves into the psyche of obsessive war correspondents who seldom return to their home countries, highlighting their disinterest in the broader political implications of the violence they documented, or their ability to compartmentalize such concepts to maintain their focus. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. And if you have a movie or TV show that you want us to cover, just comment it down below. We'll make a video of it in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our playlist for more recaps.